Hey everybody, welcome back to my gym and welcome to another review. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the Rep Fitness Zero Gap Bench. So a little bit of background. What I was benching on before I got this bench was the Rogue Flat Utility Bench, which is just, I mean, it's a basic bench. It's a solid piece of equipment but it just didn't have the adjustability that I wanted. I had a lot of incline work that was getting programmed as well as just kind of like wanting a more versatile piece of equipment. I would looked at Rogue's adjustable benches like the AB2 and the AB3, and I just couldn't bring myself to fork over that kind of cash um, because I didn't have that kind of cash. And so I started looking at other options and one that came up and it just happened to be getting developed as I was doing bench shopping was the rep fitness zero gap bench what i liked about it is that the gap and the whole marketing piece on this is that basically the gap between the seat and the backrest is adjustable so that there's always a zero gap no matter which position that you have it in this is an advantage over other benches because so like with the rogue ab3 which is a really nice adjustable bench if you take that bench and you adjust it so that it's completely flat, you actually have a significant gap uh, between the backrest and the, the pad for your butt. Uh, and it can get a little bit annoying, especially if you just happen to be falling on that. A lot of people, when they use those kind of benches, they just use the back pad when they're, do, when they're doing flat benching. Uh, but not everybody does. Uh, I'm one of those people that doesn't. So I sprung for the zero gap. I did an initial review, so if you could just click up here, uh, somewhere at the top, it's gonna appear for you to maybe go back and watch the unboxing, which it worked really well. And this is just gonna be the follow-up review because uh, I've had this piece of equipment for just under a year. And I just wanted to like follow up. And I got it right when it came out. I've been using it for a while and I wanna make sure that I pass on the things I like about it. Maybe some of the things I don't like about it. And uh, some room for improvement. There's definitely some room for improvement. But again, 500 bucks. You $500 for an adjustable bench like this. Uh, bottom line up front, you're, you're already winning with a bench like that. So the actual setup of the bench is pretty easy. Basically what you have is two labeled selectors all the way down from negative 15 to 45 for the, the butt pad. And then this back one is uh, all the way from flat, which is the circle hole here, to 15 degrees, all the way up to 90 degrees, straight up and down. All that you have to do to adjust these is this simple pin right here. I'd pull it right now, but the back would come crashing down. And then on the butt pad, underneath, you have this. This is one of those where you have to twist it to tighten it kind of down. To tighten it kind of down to tighten it down and then you have to pull it to adjust it in and out uh, and then to adjust the angle so basically this would fall into a hole when it falls into the hole you then tighten this and what that does is it just kind of it takes up the gap I'm trying to get this shot it takes up the gap between there and there which just gives you a little bit more of a sturdy hold. And same type of thing, so to adjust it up and down, you just pull this push pin, which I'll demonstrate here in just a minute. The way that the backrest pivots up and down is through the use of this uh, like bushing type system. Uh, it's a sealed bushing bearing. Uh, someone's gonna have to correct me on this. Uh, I'll look it up later and feel like an idiot, but uh, this bushing bearing basically just floats in there, not floats, it just, it, it rotates on this, which makes it pretty solid. You know, it's a heavy duty piece of metal that's supporting you as you adjust this thing up and down. Really no complaints on the solidness. Uh, a couple of the little things though, so this side, the gap is a little bit bigger right now. Then the other side, uh, which this is uh, part of the, we'll call it the improvement plan that I think Rep Fitness should probably uh, do. Basically my biggest complaint with this bench is that there's some wobble that's in the backrest and I'll show you guys that wobble now. So when you guys have this up and it's unsupported, 
So right now it is upright. It's being supported here by the pin and here at the hinge point. And because of the amount of play in this thing, when it's unsupported, you have a decent amount of kind of wobble. Now on that, is it really that big of a deal? Probably not. The reason I say probably not is because when you're benching on it, it feels solid. Uh, I've never had any issues and I've done rows with this. I've done benching with this and I've never actually had it wobble on me while I was performing the lift. It's just kind of an annoying thing uh, as you go to set up. And again, just kind of showing you, nothing's moving except for that back bench pad. And you can even kind of hear it. Uh, but I think that that wobble is coming from a couple different things. The first of which, it, this is where the instability originates from. The backrest, again, is supported here in the middle of the backrest, or actually it's towards the bottom, by just this, this piece of steel right here. This piece of steel extends down in and is held by this pin. Because that's a single point, you tend to have an issue where you could potentially have like just you know instability. Uh, it's got a little bit of wobble to it, it's got a little bit of slop to it, which makes it easy to adjust, but also makes it a little bit less stable. And then up here, this actually will move back and forth. I emailed Rep Fitness about this problem, and they kind of, I guess, blew me off. I don't know. They weren't rude, but they didn't really have any good answer for me. All right, so that's it kind of for the initial problem that I have. Uh, some of the initial good things that I have are one, on the back side of the flat utility bench from Rogue, there is this, the material that they use, it's kind of like what's underneath a box spring, like a cheap box spring. And so it tends to fray. I'll probably just show you guys here in just a second, but it tends to fray. Uh, it's just kind of annoying. Uh, what I like about this bench is the back side is actually a nice like leather-like material. And it's got this bead going around the outside edge. Anyways, on the back, it's nice and finished. Uh, there's no slop. There's no ugly, burned, whatever. It is a significantly better quality material going all the way through. Another thing I like is that it has this functionality here. You can actually buy a footrest piece. And what you could do then is turn this into like a decline bench. So there'd be a foot roller that comes off at of this end. And this would turn into a decline bench. And you can use that for sit-ups or or whatever really you want to use it for. And the way that you would get that aligned is you would throw the footrest in the top and then you would adjust this down. And then you take up that space and you basically have a zero gap. There's a small gap, but pretty much a zero gap decline bench. Just kind of a little thing, uh, especially if you do decline work or you do sit-ups work with like a medicine ball, this could be something that you want. All right, so for the actual like construction and build, it is so freaking solid with an exception. I just don't like the way that the back kind of clips in uh, just on that single point, the wobble, whatever. Getting over it now, uh, it's a solidly built bench. It's freaking heavy. Um, I, I actually store my bench right here alongside my lifting platform and have to move it up onto the lifting platform to actually use it. And when I do that, let's just say that it is a little bit of effort and it's got these nice roller wheels to help you get it around. Uh, these are like your roller blade. These are like your roller blade type wheels. They move nicely. I mean, it's a wheel and it really does help you get around. Uh, and it's also, it stands up nicely because it has this bracket built into the back. A lot of the times I'll stand this thing up and it stands nicely, basically between the back pad and the feet. It stands nice and square. Although this is another point, I think, for improvement. Uh, I always worry about setting this thing up and ru uh, ruining my pad on the back side. And if there was maybe some sort of foot that you could buy that came out of the post here and would save the end of your pad when you're standing it upright, I feel like that would be kind of like a cool little, you know, $10 piece or whatever that you can buy with the bench. Uh, especially if you plan to store it 
vertically. All right, so like I said, the adjustment actually isn't that difficult to do. And in order to adjust this back pad, like I talked about earlier, there's this blue push pin here. Uh, you basically you support the back, pull the pin, and you can go from, again, zero all the way up to 90 degrees. So zero, and if you just pull it out once, you can use two hands, pops in. It's actually really lightweight. There's nothing really heavy to it. It is a heavy duty bench, but that heavy duty bench doesn't mean that it's a heavy pad. Uh, so again, here it is up at like 30 degrees. Bring it back down to zero. And this is kind of where my uh, another point a feedback. Now this feedback is like purely skills based. There's really no way around this because it is designed as a zero gap bench. Because it's designed that way, you have to actively be able to move this out of the way, the butt pad out of the way, as you adjust the back. Let me just demonstrate real quick. If you try to go above the 30 degree point, because of where the pad is currently at, you're actually kind of fighting the pad to get it into position. So when you first get this and you unbox it and you start using it, don't be surprised if you have some issues where you're like, oh, I was just gonna adjust the back, now we need to go back and move the butt pad out of the way. One of the things you can do to get past this is to leave this at zero degrees and when you're adjusting your back pad, just get used to pulling this one all the way out. This is literally, this gap is how much play it's going to take when I stand this thing up to 90 degrees. So there it is up at 90 degrees. And when you're, and when you're sitting in it at 90 degrees, it's actually pretty comfortable for what 90 degrees is. And you don't expect 90 degrees to feel like this, but this is the bench at 90 degrees. Now you'll notice right now the butt pad's a little bit wobbly. If you tighten up that gap, it takes a little bit out of it, but not much. But when you're actually sitting in it, now if I was to like push and brace with my legs, there's no more wobble. It's just when I'm sitting unsupported that there's a wobble to it. And so if you're pushing back into this like you would if you're doing like a strict military press or something, it's really not that big of a deal. And then you drop this down to like, 75, this is actually more, 75 degrees is a little bit more what most people might consider to use for like a seated upright press of some variety. And you can bring the seat pad up one notch. And it actually produces a very nice like upright yet laid back kind of position. So you're still supported, you're still upright, but you feel like you're secure. And again, there's no gap between this pad and the back pad. Come down to 60 degrees, and I would probably use the exact same pan angle, but there is a small gap that's developed here. So you just pull this down. Another zero gap. And really not even that much of a wobble at this angle. Uh, some angles are more secure than others. Uh, one of the reasons is because this pad is butted up so hard against this pad that it's actually securing itself. So again, really no wobble at 60 degrees. Forty-five degrees. Now this here, I think it's a little bit awkward when it's forty-five degrees and this is sitting at thirty. And this is sitting at 15. So in my opinion, if you're gonna be at 45 degrees, it feels a little bit better to be up at 30 degrees on the back pad. Now this is, it's pretty long. So you tend to fall back into it. One thing is that the front here, it's pretty wide. So it's pushing my legs apart from each other. It's not a bad thing, it's just an observation. And then you're sitting back here at 45 degrees or 60, 45, 45 degrees, and it feels pretty good, feels pretty relaxed. I could probably just go to sleep here. And again, just my recommendation when you're working between settings, just move the seat all the way out of the way. Come down to 30, 30. You could either leave it or take it up one more notch. 
if you really wanted to do like an incline bench press, uh, that way you're actually like pushing all of your weight is like falling right down into this. And like I said, this is a very tall front seat pad. So it's really pushing my legs apart. It's really not that big of a deal. It's actually kind of comfortable, uh, but just keep that in mind. And here we are. And then 15, which, I mean, it's 15 degrees. And then all the way back down to zero. When you're at zero, collapse it all the way back in, tighten it up, zero gap. So that's kind of the, the functionality and the, the how to, how to use it. It's a really easy bench to get used to. Uh, it's just, again, I've said it like five times now, but it's getting used to with this pad, having to move it in and out and to be able to anticipate where the back pad needs to be. And it just comes with time. It just comes with a little bit of practice, a little bit of trial and error, if you will. So early I touched on this thing standing upright and how I thought that an additional piece, a little foot piece that goes in the back here would be nice. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. So this is a heavy bench. It has this fixed handle. So when it's standing upright, it actually stands pretty nicely. It's pretty secure, got no problems with it. Again, it's just this pad meeting the floor. And I just worry about any sort of advanced wear but you can see that it stands on the blue feet really nicely and that it is completely free. The wheels are completely free because you can spin the wheels when it's standing upright. Give you guys another view. Again, here's that fixed handle. Now I'm telling you, this is a heavy bench. I actually end up using this front post to manipulate it more than I use the handle, but the handle is there. The handle is nice for like moving it around to the platform, uh, but if I'm like moving it far, I'll just grab this little trifecta front foot, which by the way, that is an incredibly stable design. All right, so that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, kind of down and dirty. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of out of it today, but uh, just gonna send it anyways. So the rep, AB5000 Zero Gap. Uh, personally, I think it's a really good bench. I think if you have $500 to spend on a bench, that that's the one I would buy. I think it's a great purchase. There's a couple things I think that rep can work on, but really they're, they're nitpicky things. For an adjustable bench that has a zero gap, it's a good deal. It really is, $500 is a good deal. The wobble that's in it, I mean, is it even really worth fixing? Um, I just kind of think it's better just to deal with the wobble because it's only a wobble when it's unloaded. The second that you load yourself, so if you hold a barbell, that wobble's gone. I've never actually had that wobble come into play. And I've done like rows on this before where my chest has been in the pad and I've had zero problems. So I think it's a great bench. And I think for $500, you'd be hard pressed to find a better bench for the money. So that's it. That's the bench. The Rep Fitness Zero Gap AB5000. Highly recommended. I think it's a solid piece of kit. Oh, plus real quick, my blue rack from Rogue and this match in color. Just kind of like one of those little things. If you buy a colored rack, you kind of want stuff to match it. The bench matches really nicely. can barely tell a difference. But anyways, that's the review. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, follow me on Instagram at the Kurt Locker and also watch some of my other videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video.